Coming off our examination and comparison of Shadow of the Tomb Raider on console, we really already know it's an impressive looking game. Really, Shadow of the Tomb Raider easily goes head to head in visual splendor with many of the first party titles we've seen this generation. Lara Croft has an illustrious cross-platform history, with a special place in the pantheon of PC gaming's greatest heroes. Tomb Raider games have nearly always had PC versions supporting the latest in rendering technology, starting off with the first 3D accelerators, all the way to unique PC-exclusive methods for hair rendering. And looking to Shadow of the Tomb Raider here, that reputation holds true. In supporting the latest APIs and techniques, the PC version of Shadow of the Tomb Raider presents an elegance of rendering, which underscores the subtle beauty that the game has already shown on the other platforms. And all that beauty starts in the graphics menu like any good PC game. Much like how that original Tomb Raider saw support for the latest graphics APIs in its Windows 95 incarnation, Shadow of the Tomb Raider supports DirectX 12 right at launch, and not just in some sort of shallow checkbox kind of way. Wait, what? DirectX 12 is the recommended API to run the game on? This is practically unheard of outside of unique instances such as Doom 2016 or Ashes of the Singularity. That wonderful porting house of Nixus here has clearly put in the time and effort to have a DirectX 12 implementation which is both forward looking and performant. The X12 enables the imminent post-launch implementation of ray tracing. It also secures the PC version's greatest advantage over the console versions. Should you have a proper modern CPU, the low-level API here can really roar past the X11 in terms of raw performance. While we at Digital Foundry are waiting on WHQL drivers and a day one patch for more rigorous comparisons of performance, I can easily already tell you that DX12 in this game is the way to go, just as it is mentioned in the menu. Just look at this scene here in the jungle. With DX11 on the left hand side here, we see the Ryzen 1700X CPU limiting a GTX 1070. The CPU overhead from the driver and draw calls is getting in the way of it achieving an awesome 60 FPS. On the right hand side, we see the DX12 implementation here, fully enabling the GPU to be maxed out with no trouble. It does not stop at 60 of course. While the mighty Xbox One X struggles to hit a locked 60 FPS in its performance mode, DX12 on PC lets you crank out the performance easily exceeding 120 FPS. Just look at how the game scales across threads here as I artificially limit it. That utilization spread is a thing of art. While you probably will hit that performance wall due to a single threaded game code at some point, we are still looking at a dramatic increase of multi-core efficiency under DX12. It's really impressive stuff, but that's just one part of the equation here. Sure, Lara can run at the speed of light if you wish, but how does it look like when you slow down to a crawl to examine the scenery? Now Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a dark game, and I don't just mean because of that killer black metal aesthetic found through it all. There's a ton of shadow play in the depth of the jungle where you lurk like a predator and search for prey. Shadows are the first major area where Shadow of the Tomb Raider shines over the console versions, or should I say cast a shadow on them? The console versions of the game run with BTAO, a screen space ambient occlusion which does a reasonable job of approximating indirect contact shadows in the game environment. On PC though you have access to HBAO+, which as a proven method has a dramatic impact on the realism of the game's indirect shadowing, filling in more of the environment with shadows where your eye expects it. It works to prevent that incorrect, diffuse glow of lighting on many of the game's objects. Just look at Lara here on PC with HBAO+, versus how she looks in that same scene with the standard console version of Ambient Occlusion. Notice how the backside of her legs or the contours of her body no longer have that over-brightened look. They fit more in with the environment. Even in the main menu you can see just how much more grounded objects are due to the introduction of HBAO+. Mind you, the Xbox versions of this game have a slightly different gamma curve than all other versions, but the more realistic ambient shadowing from HBAO+, situates objects in this game world much more so. Curiously though, in this pre-day 1 state, the launcher options menu has the option for VXAO when DX11 is chosen. This curiously does not work and automatically switches back to HBAO Plus after selecting. I do hope that we see this more high-end effect enabled in post-launch and for DX12 as well. As shown in Rise of the Tomb Raider before it, this world space ambient occlusion technique based upon voxels would greatly enhance the indirect shadowing beyond that which we are already seeing. But moving beyond ambient occlusion, we are also graced with much finer shadow fidelity on PC, and smaller, finer frogs as well. Wait, what? 
Why is the frog here smaller? While this is probably just some in-joke for the Nixus development team, the smaller frog on PC here actually emphasizes two great advantages that the version has. Looking at the Premiere console version here in the Xbox One X, we can see how the game actually uses the medium shadow settings in comparison to the PC version on Ultra. The shadows on Xbox here show obvious banding and break up on smaller detail. Switch over to PC and on Ultra and you get much higher resolution shadow cascades that is surprisingly not overly sharp. This higher resolution shadow map is then further enhanced with a fine, razor sharp contact shadow from a screen space calculation. These screen space shadows allow for smaller world objects, which usually not to have cast shadows, to have direct object shadows in the direction of sunlight, like the frog you saw earlier. If you just had medium shadows like on the console version, the frog being smaller in size would have a pixely disembodied blob that wouldn't even really align with the point of casting. On PC, where you have higher resolution shadow maps in the first place and these screen space contact shadows, the frog can actually be smaller and still have a really proper shadow detail. It's kind of neat actually. With the rock solid DX12 foundation here, we should also expect that post launch support of DirectX ray tracing with ray trace shadows. Using footage from the RTX launch at Gamescom here, you can see how the normal shadows of the PC or console version remain sharp and defined regardless of how far the caster is from them. If we switch over to ray trace shadows, shadows further from objects, on this building here for example, soften and diffuse instead of staying unrealistically sharp. In a rare moment in history, ultra shadows for once are not uniformly ultra sharp, so no more complaining there please. Since the shadows from ray tracing also will apply uniformly from lit sources, ray trace shadows, when they launch at least, will enable shadows from small point lights in the game where such lights did not have them at all before. So scenes like in the intro to the game here, with its emphasis on small point lights from candles and fireworks and the like, will have tons of realistic shadows cast across the environment instead of just being shadowless lighting. And since ray tracing is accurate down to the pixel, all shadows should perfectly line up with the content point of the shadow caster itself. This will prevent that shadow bias problem that you see here that you've seen in tons of games, like where you can see the shadow disconnected from the object that is casting it, kind of floating next to it actually. Along with richer, more fine detailed shadows, the world in motion and in the distance on PC will not break down so easily with obvious pop-in or low detailed models like you can find on the console version. In direct comparisons, we can say that the console version of Shadow of the Tomb Raider runs with the medium setting for level of detail as found on PC. On console, pop-in and level of detail changes can be pretty obvious as you move through the jungle as they occur much closer to the camera. With the X12 here on PC, you can scarcely see a CPU performance penalty at all really, and you can push it up to Ultra to clear up the most distracting cases of object pop-in. It keeps the world stable in motion. Pushing up the LOD higher also has the neat side effect of increasing the amount of objects casting shadow maps, meaning you can see fuller shadows in the area around Lara even from the tree canopy above. The stability in motion is not just limited to level of detail and shadows, thankfully. The PC version of Shadow of the Tomb Raider as it is right now offers superior anti-aliasing methods than those found on console. While the default TAA as found on console does a great job of keeping the image stable there, it will still have obvious flaws, such as not handling subpixel detail for geometry perfectly, especially in motion, or taking a few frames to kick in after a camera changes. Nixus has actually taken the time here to offer various SMA8 modes on PC that go above this and also cater to certain personal image quality concerns. Using the superior SMA8 T2X, the game uses this default TAA found on the console version and combines it with a single frame post process SMAA 1X. This allows the game to still have anti-aliased gradients even in those areas where TAA fails, such as right after a camera change. Notice here on PC, with SMAA T2X involved, how Lara's arm and shoulder are still anti-aliased after the camera switch, unlike Xbox One X where the image is raw, completely raw. Well, what if you don't like TAA? Nixus was nice enough here to also offer single frame SMAA 1X and SMAA S2X, which uses multi sample anti aliasing. Wow, the year 2018, and we are graced with MSAA in a modern renderer. That's a really rare thing indeed. 
For all of you who dislike TAA, you can use SMAA S2X to keep that image sharp whilst also keeping it stabler in motion on geometric objects thanks to the MSAA pass. Though it must be said, I really only recommend this if you direly dislike the side effects of TAA or are already running the game at a high resolution. Firstly, adding MSAA makes the option expensive, as the warning in the option menu makes it clear. MSAA will also not treat transparencies or specific non-geometric objects like Lara's hair, leaving such features at the mercy of single frame SMAA only. So the image in general may be sharper and still be somewhat stable, but it will not be as stable on a number of world objects thanks to not having TAA. But Nixus of course thought ahead here, and it also has a great equalizer in SMAA4X. This option combines TAA, SMAA, and MSAA all together in one. So it will be suitably expensive, so expect that in return. Here in the scene you can see SMAA4X driving the game into the sub 60 FPS territory on Ultra at 1080p on a GTX 1070. So it is heavy. The quality is there though. In all those areas where TAA normally fails, you then have SMAA and MSAA working together to help keep that image stable, and it really does an admirable job of doing it. Look here in the jungle as the camera pans. Usually TAA would still see some subpixel breakup here on the vegetation itself, but in combination with the MSAA, it still holds up. I would still be careful here about using this option though, because in a number of scenes I saw a difference in shadow bias, leading the shadows to be a bit blockier than they would otherwise be. So Nixus, if you're watching this, please fix this. Like any great thing on PC though, this is your choice, and one that is not binary. Should you want to use normal TAA or SMAA T2X and just push up the resolution so you get the full screen benefits of downsampling? Well, you can do that too. Or you can keep to your native resolution and choose to use these expensive MSAA options which invariably are more bandwidth friendly to your GPU. For this video, I played the game on a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 and saw a mostly stable 60fps at 1080p at ultra settings with SMAA T2X. I also managed a stable 30fps on ultra at 1620p or a more or less stable 30fps with dips at 1871p. From this you can know that resolution has a profound impact on performance in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So with this info in mind, you can hopefully set your expectations for the launch window based upon how your GPU usually performs in comparison to that one. But we're still working on immature drivers here and pre-launch game code. You will have to wait for more specific information on performance metrics for each individual setting in a representative post-launch video. But let's get back into the last few areas here where the PC version really pushes ahead. Like in the previous game before, Shadow of the Tomb Raider offers an option to enable tessellation on PC. Unlike in the previous game though, Shadow of the Tomb Raider has an extensive use of parallax occlusion mapping on many game surfaces, so the dramatic visual effect of using tessellation is decidedly lessened. Here looking at the Xbox One X version of the game, you can see how enabling tessellation on PC in comparison further increases the depth and realism present in the game's ground terrain. Since it is using real geometry to represent these surfaces as well, on top of the parallax occlusion mapping, you also get more realistic shadow behavior from the ground. And since it is real geometry, shadows cast onto the ground will adhere properly to the curves of the surface instead of just being on a flat plane above it. It's a subtle difference, but one that is actually appreciated as the ground looks much more real. Along with looking better up close due to tessellation, the ground looks better from the distance in the PC version of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The Achilles heel of this generation of console rears its blurry, undersampled head as the consoles use a rather timid 4x anisotropic filtering. This makes grazing angle views and distant texture features rather poor on console. While there are not many flat stretches of unadorned terrain in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the benefits provided by 8 or 16x anisotropic filtering are still immediately apparent. The game is already soft as is with TAA being enabled, so there's no reason to make it even blurrier with poor texture filtering is how I see it. So keep that to 16 or 8x on PC. If you do want the game to be blurrier though, you might as well have it in an area that actually enhances visuals instead of detracting them. In this, the PC version offers a superior depth of field option than that found on consoles. See, the default normal setting of the game uses that same nice hexagonal bokeh depth of field you see on the console version of the game, but pumping that setting up to high allows you to also see benefits of that effect in gameplay itself. On high, objects close to the camera blur out, enhancing that filmic nature of the gameplay itself. 
Here as Lara is close to the camera for example, you can see how her back is blurred by the nice high quality depth of field on PC. Sure it's subtle, but since the game is already going for that filmic look, this little bit really helps communicate the idea that a camera is following Lara around. And that's it really. Everything else is actually par for par with the console version. But still, this is one refined PC release in the current state as I see it. You have the choice to keep the game at console settings by leaving everything to normal essentially. You also have the ability to push up the fidelity and nuance of the key visual notes in the game should you wish. The game also ships with a killer DX12 implementation which really lives up to the promise of that API. It offers dramatically lower driver overhead here enabling blazing fast frame rates. But still, be on the lookout in the near future for a video focusing on the specific performance of mid-range configurations and my usual breakdown of performance in percentage for each setting. In the meantime though, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like what you saw and heard, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, consider hitting that little bell button in the corner to be notified as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to talk to me about Shadow of the Tomb Raider's PC version, write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. As always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen! Please.